Right, so hello everyone. Today we're just going to look at the financial statement layout in grade 11. So we are going to start with the income statement. So I want to show you over there, that is the first part of your income statement. You will see that we are going to start with sales minus debtors allowance. Then over there we will minus cost of sales. So the amount over there will always be in a bracket. And then sales minus cost of sales will give you the gross profit. Then over here, we're going to enter all our income, rent income, discount uh, received, uh, fee income, commission income. We'll enter all of them over here. Provision for bad debts adjustment, if it's an income. Everything inside the block will be added on top. Then we're going to take our gross profit, add the gross operating income to get our gross operating profit. Then we've got a block for our expenses and we're going to add all our expenses in here, do the adjustments if there's an adjustment and add them all together over there. Then again, that amount that you get over there will be in a bracket. So then we're just going to say the gross operating profit minus the operating expenses to get an answer here at the bottom, my operating profit or loss. I'm going to add my interest income. I'm going to get an answer. Then I'm going to subtract my interest expense and I'll get my net profit for the year. With my interest income, it can be interest on current account. It can be just a normal interest income or it can be interest on fixed deposit. We'll have to add all of them together. Then with interest expense, it can either be just a normal expense in general or it can be interest on overdraft or it can be interest on loan. So it might be a lot of them that you're going to add together to get the final amount over there. Right, next up are the notes to the balance sheet. We are already familiar with note three, which is our fixed assets note. We've done that in a separate chapter. So I'm just going to continue from there. And the next note that we're going to look at is note four. You'll see there it is inventories. Now, with inventories, you've got trading stock and consumable stores on hand, and those amounts will always be the physical stock take in your adjustments, and you just put them in and add them together. With your debtors, however, you will start with an amount for trade debtors. Then we might have to write off an amount. Then something else happened that we need to add together. So you're going to show everything in a bracket. Over there, we're going to subtract provision for bad debts. That's the 5% amount. And then we're going to get an answer, which is our net debtors. If there's a prepaid expense and accrued income, we're going to add it. So we're then going to say net debtors plus the prepaid expense plus the accrued income will give me my final amount over there. Note six is our cash and cash equivalence note. Very straightforward. If there's anything happening, you need to show it in a bracket next to all the entries. Uh, fixed deposit is only when it matures within 12 months, and they will say very clearly that it matures. If there's a savings account, you put it in. If there's a notice deposit, then you just put it in there. Bank, if it's positive, if it's in overdraft, it goes somewhere else. And then with bank, same thing. You might have a couple of amounts that you need to either add or subtract over there and you need to show everything in a bracket and then cash flows and petty cash and you just add everything together. Right, then we've got note seven, which is the capital note. You'll see we've got a column for the two partners. Balance at the beginning of the year. If there's a contribution, you add it. And now something new in grade 11 is they may take some of their capital, which means you'll just put that in a bracket. And then the balance at the beginning plus the addition minus the decrease in capital will give you the balance in the end. You do it for both partners and then you just add up horizontally 
to get a total over there because that total will go to the balance sheet. Right, so this is the current accounts note. You'll see again, there's a column for each partner. It starts with salaries, you just fill it in. If the partner has a bonus, you fill it in. If there's interest on capital, you fill it in. The easiest account to help you in, um, enter this is the appropriation account. Then basically you're gonna add the first three together to get the primary distribution. You need to know that those three are the primary distribution. And this is now why the appropriation account helps because that amount is your final distribution. How are you splitting the profit? Are you splitting it two to one? Are you splitting it three to four? Or according to their contribution? So that's why it's easier to just do the appropriation account first and then fill in the two amounts. Then the primary plus the final will give you the amount according to um, this income statement, the net profit amount. So three amounts, add them together. Fill in the final distribution, get an answer. Then this amount over here will be the net profit amount from your appropriation account. So after you've done that and you've done that, if you add these two amounts together, you're supposed to get the same answer as in your appropriation account. Drawings, you fill it in. It must be in a bracket because you're going to subtract it. Then the balance at the beginning of the year, if it's a debit balance, it goes in a bracket. If it's a credit balance, it stays positive. And then you're literally going to say the net profit amount minus the drawings minus the opening balance if it's debit gives you an answer. Same thing over here. That amount minus the drawings. Now we've got a positive balance. So add it and you might get a negative in the end again just to show you that it can either be positive or negative. And then you just work across horizontally because that amount over there is the one that we want to enter on our financial statement. Finally, we've got note nine, trade and other payables. This is my creditors. So same thing, I'm gonna start with my creditors. If something happened, I'm either gonna add it or I'm going to subtract it to my creditors. Then we've done this these adjustments already. So creditors for salaries, that is my net salary that I owe my creditor. If there's an adjustment for that, I'm gonna enter the amount over there. Then the tax on that adjustment and then if there's medical aid or pension fund or UIF, I'm going to enter all of them in there as well. Please remember to add the contribution amount to the deduction when you do pension fund entry or a medical aid entry. And then accrued expense and income received in advance will also be added over here and then you just add everything together. Right, so this is the first part of my balance sheet. This is the assets part. You'll see we've got two sections, the non-current assets and the current assets. Non-current, we've got our fixed assets, which are note three, land and buildings, vehicles, and equipment. We've got a fixed deposit as our financial asset. Then over here, we've got our notes that I've just covered. We literally just enter the amounts in there from my notes calculation. The only thing that you need to take note is if my fixed deposit is 80,000 and I tell you that 20,000 will mature within the next financial year, then you need to subtract it. So then my fixed deposit will only be 60,000. And then the 20 that I subtracted will go into my cash and cash equivalents. If you go back to the note that I just covered, I had an entry in there for fixed deposit. If it matures within 12 months, that will be my 20,000. And then the golden rule is everything inside a block must be added on top. So then basically my non-current assets over there plus my current assets over there will give me my total assets here at the bottom. And this is the bottom part of the balance sheet, my total equity and liabilities part. It has split into three sections, my owner's equity section, non-current liabilities and current liabilities. So very easy over there. I've done the notes and I just put in the amounts. Everything inside the block must go on top. My loan goes over there. So same thing as with the fixed deposit. If my loan is 80,000 and they tell me that I'm going to pay back 10,000 on the loan within the next year, 
then I need to subtract it, which means my total loan will only be 70,000. But right down here at the bottom, there's a section where I put the 10,000. So together, my loan is still 80, but I will have to split it into long term and short term. And that will be very clear on the in the adjustment, giving that to you. And then if they give that to you, that's the guide. Please go and split your loan. Then trade and other payables, the note just goes in there. And if you've got a bank overdraft, you put it in there. If anything were to happen with bank while it's in overdraft, you need to show all your calculations in a bracket. So whatever you add to your overdraft must be shown over there. So then you'll have three amounts, the total equity, total non-current liabilities, and my total current liabilities, those three added together to get the total equity and liabilities here at the 